a man who knows money and has some ideas for America on how to manage it for the future. Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, your take on this question. I think the future of the U.S. dollar could be quite bleak, but the good news is that we have something that we can do about it. The volatility of the dollar, I think, is one of the major underappreciated problems. Our dollar has actually been far more volatile than it needs to be, and that's been an impediment to economic growth. It's also one of the reasons why the dollar is losing its status as the reserve currency of the world. I would make sure that the U.S. Fed adopts effectively a single mandate to stabilize the U.S. dollar as a unit of measurement, as measured against a basket of commodities, gold, silver, nickel, and agricultural and farm commodities to go along with it. That'll actually stabilize the dollar. And the right way to think about that is imagine the number of minutes in an hour fluctuated. If that were the case, nobody would get to their meetings at the same time. Well, the same thing is true of dollars in an economy. When the dollar is that volatile, the dollars, the capital, does not find its most efficient uses or most efficient projects either. That's an impediment to economic growth. Is it simply a matter of changing policy with the Federal Reserve? Is it as simple as that? Or are there other steps here involved? Well, look, there's, there's a lot more to this. But I'm talking about at a level of starting with the low-hanging fruit. What can a U.S. president do? Absolutely appoint a chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve that doesn't commit the same sins we've been committing for the last 25 years, trying to hit inflation and unemployment with one arrow of monetary policy to do it. That's proven to be a disaster. Right. The government is spending far more money than we're generating, than we're taking in. This is a problem, and this is a fiscal problem that goes beyond just the Federal Reserve. But in order to make those cuts, I think that we need to be doing it against the backdrop of economic strength rather than weakness. It's part of the reason why there's a big debate and a lot of reluctance, understandably, to make entitlement cuts, is that our economy is growing at less than 1% GDP growth. So I think the real most important answer is, how do we go back to growing at over 4% GDP growth, as we have for most of our national history? We grew at over 4% until we left the gold standard in around 1972. Until then, we were growing at an average of 4 plus percent GDP growth. Even after that, when the Fed was focused on dollar stability, until about 2000, we had over 3% GDP growth. This year, we're slated to deliver and register less than 1% GDP growth. That is staggering. Now, one of the ways we do it is drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear energy, put people back to work by no longer paying them to stay at home. Yes, as I said, restore that single mandate of dollar stability for the U.S. Fed, shut down the administrative state, the regulatory state that puts a wet blanket on businesses through coddling regulations across most of the economy. That'll get us back to real economic growth, but then we grow our way out of some of our fiscal problems and we have an environment where Americans are more open to a conversation about which entitlements are overreaching and which ones can actually be cut. That's our path to get there on the fiscal side. Right. Look, and as somebody who's lived the American dream and built businesses rather than living outside of politics, I see both sides of this, the monetary side and the fiscal side. Both are going to be important. And that's a very important point because the world is watching the, at the way that America handles its finances, handles its wallet, handles its debt. And... China has successfully, in the year 2023, has successfully been able to convince at least eight countries that, look, you need to start moving away from the dollar. There's no reason for us to stay on the U.S. dollar. And China is starting to convince countries like Brazil to start trading in Chinese yuan. Is that a path that's going to only continue to pose a threat to America? Or is there a limited stage in which that can flourish? nations would still rather hold the U.S. dollar than the yuan. But amidst this weak period we've been in, especially under the Biden administration, yes, this should serve as a wake-up call, but I don't think it's going to have to be permanent. January 2025 isn't that far from now, and so I don't think we're going to do permanent damage between now and then. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.